Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be discussing and understanding together the topic of a fuel injector for an auxiliary engine on board merchant and passenger vessels. In this particular video, we'll be understanding about the different parts of such a fuel injector and also the working principle and in general working of a fuel injector. So let us start. As we all know that a fuel injector along with a fuel pump is basically the heart of any marine diesel engine may it be used for propulsion or for power generation and hence the fuel injector needs to be very carefully studied understood and also very adequately maintained in the manufacturer's prescribed condition to make sure that your engine is always running in a healthy state this ensures not only operational tidiness but also goes as far as to ensure environmental compliances, navigational safety and almost everything that you can think about while you are on board. To facilitate this, we first need to understand the different parts of a fuel injector and then get familiar with what the function of each part is. So let us start. If we focus on the expanded view or the expanded burst out diagram of the fuel injector on our screen the first part that we should see is the body or the housing of the fuel injector now this body or housing is the main outer casing within the fuel injector and this casing in turn holds all the internal components together the body or the housing has threads on its surface after the tapered section on which would come the next parts namely the lock nut and the pressure adjusting nut. These are the parts that are used to adjust and secure the spring compression. So basically it is the tightening combination and relative tightening position of these lock nuts and pressure adjusting nut that in turn decides what the injector's opening pressure is and that is how we know that the pressure adjusting nut controls the injector opening pressure. Moving on, the next parts under focus would be the washer and the spring retainer. While the spring retainer provides spacing and alignment, the washer also does the same job on the exterior by maintaining the adequate spacing in case of the aging of the injectors and also depending upon the regulating of the pressure that is to be maintained on the injector in the terms of injector opening pressure inside the structure. In between this, we also have the spring carrier which holds and centers the injector spring, thus maintaining the relative vertical position of the spring and also the horizontal alignment. The spring itself is then indeed the heart of the injector and how so? Because it is this spring that decides and maintains the pressure regulation within the injector. It is the part that as a virtue of the pressure exerted controls the opening and closing of the needle which I would be explaining later on as to how it does. The spring retainer, the locating pins and the spacer keep the spring and the needle in place and also ensure the precision of the movement of the needle with relation to the compressor pressure exerted by the spring. The needle in itself is the part that lifts to allow the fuel injection into the combustion chamber and the nozzle is the precision component through which the fuel passes upon the lifting of the needle and gets atomized into very fine particles or a fine mist upon passage to the fine holes of the nozzle thereby making it easy and practical for these particles to combust within the combustion chamber. At last the cap nut is the bottom part that seals the assembly from the bottom and also keeps the nozzle secured and in turn in place. The entire assembly also has in final a washer which is usually a copper washer and is prescribed by the manufacturer or basically provided by the manufacturer on which it seats and seals across the surface of the hole through which the injector is allowed to pass into the unit. Now that we are familiar with the different parts of a fuel injector and we can also easily see on the diagram as to how they are assembled by showing you it 
in a expanded or burst out view now let us focus on how the fuel injector works during the normal running of an auxiliary engine the first step officially has to be the fuel supply and the fuel pressurization so the fuel which is coming into your system with the help of the supply and the circulating pumps and then thereby coming to your generator this fuel is delivered at a high pressure with the help of the fuel pump and where is it delivered it is delivered through the lines that is the fuel lines of the generator into the injector body this fuel then enters peripherally and surrounds the needle inside the injector so basically through the peripheral passage or through the area surrounding the needle it goes and thereby awaits on the surface of the needle across which it is seated and then it is very important to understand that now that the fuel is there with this pressure build up the needle initially is held tightly against the nozzle with the help of spring force so basically right now your needle is closed what does this ensure it ensures that initially no fuel drips into your combustion chamber or into your cylinder space until the proper pressure build up is guaranteed and also by not allowing the fuel to pass through until it reaches up to the desired pressure it simplifies the process of pressure build up with the help of the fuel pump and through restriction in the flow passage so basically this is how also we ensure that the fuel which is being sent into the unit is properly or adequately pressurized and is also adequately optimized by passing through the nozzle holes now as the pressure keeps on building up and it rises obviously it would act on the shoulder or the tapered area of the needle and thus once the fuel pressure reaches the set pressure or just slightly exceeds it then it lifts the needle which pressure am i talking about over here i am talking about the calibrated spring tension or the pressure that is exerted on the spring with the help of the compression forces that we are exerting with the help of the pressure adjusting nut and the lock nut assembly as well as the tightening of the pressure adjusting nut onto the body so once this pressure is exceeded by the fuel which is acting on the shoulder of the needle the needle lifts and as discussed before once this fuel passes through the fine holes in the nozzle it gets broken down into several finite particles thereby forming a mist and thus this mist upon injection enters into the combustion chamber where it goes through complete and efficient combustion now with the simultaneous rotation of the camshaft and the motion of the follower of the fuel pump from peak to base the simultaneous pressure inside the fuel injector would drop that is the pressure at which the fuel is existing inside the injector would drop and thereby the reseating of the needle would take place the reseating would take place because of the spring force as we have already discussed before which is as a virtue of the pressure that we are exerting with the help of tightening of the nut while assembling and once the needle seats then it would instantaneously stop injecting and also avoid any further dribbling of the injector that means any untoward entry of fuel into the unit would be stopped this also helps us to understand why we always insist or why we always have to ensure that the needle and the nozzle have to be replaced as a pair and there should never be any cross usage in terms of an old needle or a new nozzle or vice versa i hope that this helps you to understand the working principle of a fuel injector for an auxiliary engine and also gives you a detailed understanding about the different parts and components that are used within the assembly of a fuel injector make sure to follow our next upcoming video in the series to ensure that you know further about the overhaul of such fuel injectors and the maintenance part and also will be covering the pressure testing aspects of the fuel injectors thank you